Hello, everybody. This is D.W. Daniel Whited from Denver, Colorado, and we're just so glad you're part of the doctor's clinic's call this evening and, and putting yourself in a position where we can just learn a little bit and get some layered learning to what we're doing and put yourself in a position where you're going to possibly take this information and help somebody have optimal health in their life. And we like to refer to the doctor's clinic. This is where the world is your waiting room. And I'm a gentleman that helps us out so much and does a fantastic job with the doctor's, doctor's clinic is Dr. Kirk Fisnick. And uh, he promised to get in a couple things tonight uh, from last week, and he's made that happen. So Dr. Kirk Fisnick, let's hear from him right now. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Sizzle Doctors Clinic call. I really like what DW says. This is where we make the world our waiting room. If you're like me, you do not like waiting rooms, and what you really want to know is how do I get healthy at home? That's really what this call is for. So let's not waste any time. Let's really just get to work. You know, not a single day goes by in my life where someone does not come and ask me, hey, Don, what's the cure for cancer? What's the cure for this? What's the cure for that? You know, and I'll tell you what. I've been preaching this forever. We have the cure. It's called Don't Get Sick, DGS, Don't Get Sick. Right now in the world, there's a revolution against aging and death. You know, did you realize that if we focused all of our resources on combating aging, we probably would come up with a cure for almost everything. Prices of health care would go down. We'd see a healthy aging population. But the money is not in that. The money is in sick care. And let's really understand that concept. Because if you understand it, it'll make it easier for you to share this information with other people. And really, less than 10% of people are really active in looking for how to age in a healthy way. You know, sure, there are lots of people who tell you, oh, yeah, they're into it, you know, as they puff on their cigarette or drink too much on a Saturday night, you know. They'll buy a a head of organic lettuce, they'll eat some broccoli, and, uh, you know, they think that, that, that they're making their move to being healthier. Well... It takes a lot more than that, and that's that's what we realize. That's what you realize when you get on a call like this. So tonight, I really want to share something that I learned at a recent conference on this revolution against aging and death. You'll hear me talking about the revolution against aging and death. And tonight, I want to share some information on building new brain cells. You know, I've been a chiropractor for nearly 30 years. When I went to school and up until recently, we were all taught that you were born with a certain number of brain cells, neurons. And if you damaged them, you would not be able to repair them. In the past few years, that theory has been proven wrong, just like most theories. I want to share some of this information with you. You know, most of you aren't, aren't health care providers, so you aren't scientists, so I'm going to keep it kind of short and to the point. My goal tonight is make it possible that not only do you have a grasp on the concept, but you'll be able to have an idea of how to share this with people and put it to use immediately. Yes, I'm going to teach you how to build new brain cells. Once you understand that, you will help others. You and your family, as everyone who listens to you, will have a vast untapped potential to live more fully. The key to tapping into this is called neurogenesis. Neurogenesis, building new brain cells. You're going to have a higher cognitive function. You're going to have better memory. You're going to have faster learning. You're going to have emotional resilience, protection against stress, anxiety, depression, elevated immunity, as well as better overall brain function. It will dramatically improve your everyday life and transform what aging looks and feels like. Let's all start by imaging, imagining a time when we are all on top of our game, confident, flowing, articulate, knowing what needed to be done and just doing it. If you encountered a difficulty, you just overcame it and bounced back. Imagine feeling this way for the rest of your life every day. It could be the most important news for brain health and human life in recent history. Let's all get involved with this thing that that we're calling the revolution against aging and death. The brain keeps growing new brain cells throughout your your entire life. It's how the brain upgrades itself. You know, in computer talk, it's like brain 4.0. In the 1950s, medical science discovered that the brain is malleable, it's adaptable, more fluid than ever thought before. This allows the brain to make new connections after traumatic brain injuries and strokes. It's more adaptable than that. One part of the brain being studied more than any other right now is called the hippocampus. Also, 
Alzheimer's disease massively attacks the hippocampus. The ability to make new memories means um, something is happening in the brain. In the, in the 1990s, Dr. Fred Gage realized this and started exploring this adult neurogenesis. He said that your brain does not stop growing in your 20s. He tells us that after a certain age, you do not go on a gradual downhill slide into decrepitude. He discovered that there's a variation in the rate of neurogenesis amongst people. Some create new brain cells at a very rapid clip. Others just kind of seem to be chugging along, and, and others produce uh, new brain cells at one-fifth of the average rate. Well, the rate of neurogenesis is a very important factor for the quality of your life. When it's high, you're alive, you're engaged, you're expansive, you're fulfilling your potential. When it slows, your brain shrinks, your life contracts, and you have memory loss. You have dementia, stress, depression, anxiety, and you have reduced executive function as well as decreased immunity. You suffer. Your life suffers. The people around you suffer. You don't want that. When we're talking about age reversal, this is so, so important. High brain quality does not mean that you're going to have a higher IQ. Rather, it means that you're going to have a, a dynamic, alive, moving brain. Your brain will remain youthful. You want to be neurohealthy, and you want to do more things that stimulate this. You want to decrease the things that are neurotoxic. What we believe in normal age is actually an artifact of the neurotoxic lifestyle that we have. Scientists have discovered that we can enhance the brain at all ages through proper stimulation. Your rate of neurogenesis not only affects your brain, but it appears to be the biomarker for overall health, including the cardiovascular system, because of the close links. You can increase the neurogenesis by three to five times, no matter what age you are, even into your 60s, 70s, 80s. We know now that the diet and lifestyle significantly outweigh our genetic inheritance when we're studying aging. Genetics only contributes 10 to 20%. So Dr. Gage found in studying mice, that if you provided them with an enriched environment, they would see an, the number of brain cells increase from 300,000 to 350,000 brain cells. That's a one-sixth increase that's seen in, over that from normal mice. They had better cognitive ability. They had better memory. They figured out things faster, and they were superior in almost all aspects. They didn't have the same fear as other mice, super mice, right? That's what you want in your house. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But in normal circumstances, 60% of new neurons die off. With this new enriched environment, almost all the new neurons survive. So not only do you get new brain cells at a faster rate, you get to keep them. But it's not just from making one change. It has to be from a combination. So what would be the possibility if somebody had an optimal childhood, if they had an optimal adolescence or young adulthood? We don't even know what does the optimal adulthood look like with this knowledge. How about old age? We don't even know what optimal old age looks like. This info is practically brand new. It's, it's new to you. Let's be that generation. Let's expand your brain health into your 80s, 90s, 100s. So first, let's start by looking at a myth. Not that long ago, Time Magazine had a cover with a picture. I remember this. They had a picture of a bunch of antidepressant pills, and, and inside it basically said that if you aren't taking these pills, you're going to be significantly behind the rest of the population who were taking them. Well, the hippocampus was started to be studied, and they, found, they figured out that depression is linked to neurogenesis. Up until recently, the popular idea that was serotonin deficiency is what created depression. SSRI drugs um, corrected that. So these drugs quickly became the second most widely prescribed drug category in the world. It generated over $15 billion for the industry. 50% of people who took them had less than effective results and frequently had undesirable side effects. New studies kind of blow away the whole serotonin deficiency theory, and it's through the hippocampus. For most of the people, the rate of neurogenesis decreases by the age of 30 to 35. By the age of 50 to 60, it's so dramatic that there's noticeable changes. People will see that you have problems. When it occurs, the quality of life goes downhill rapidly. In the adult brain, new brain cells are formed in two regions, the olfactory area 
where smells come from, and the hippocampus, which is an area for forming new memory, orientating the body in space and regulating mood. The hippocampus holds the key to brain enhancement. When we are given a toxic environment, impoverished, stressful, barren, isolated, neurogenesis seems to come to a crawl. Toxic relationships, chronic stress results in, results in brain cell death, eating poor diet, leads to poor brain function. This leads to a, a gray, threatening, sol sol hollow, and sad feeling. You can't think straight. Your problem-solving ability decreases. What constitutes a well-rounded brain and balanced lifestyle is unique for everyone. Each brain, just like a fingerprint, is different. You're not a type. You're unique. Most of the information that's been available never gets out to the general public. It sits in neural health journals that hardly even get read, read by, the, by the experts. And, and I think that by splitting everything up into, in little pieces, whatever happens, it never gets out to the general public. And, and, and by having all these different specialties, no one really works together. So there's no silver bullet for the brain. You know, I've been approached by numerous salespeople. They say they have the, the latest, the greatest, the new pill, the new potion, the new diet, um, the new brain training exercises. It, there's not one single simple plan that exists. It's multifaceted, and, and we see the population aging. We see that over 50% of the people over the age of 85 have a great chance of developing Alzheimer's disease. So what's the point of staying alive? if you're going to lose your mind. So it doesn't have to be that downward spiral as we get old. Aging can mean wisdom. That wisdom can be shared with the youth and we have a better place to live. It ensures that we know history and hopefully not relive some of it over and over. I have a lot of friends who are Native Americans and you know this, this group, they rely heavily on their elders because they do have this knowledge. If the future holds what I see, multiple sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease, Alzheimer's, dementia, will be routinely cured as this field becomes more understood. Wheelchairs will rarely be seen except for during the healing process. I see this. Only time will really tell. The earlier you begin to care for your brain, the greater the results. But it's great for any age. You can start right now in your 20s, your 30s, 40s. It doesn't matter. To realize a vibrant, healthy brain potential, you need to seek optimal performance. The brain is an extraordinary instrument that not only survived, but it's been honed for millions of years. If you look at our mammalian ancestors, you'll see that there's a, a change in the shape of our skulls. You can only imagine the changes on the inside of the head. Everything you need to have is available right now. The future can be so much better. Whole... Holistic medicine, holism, understands that we are complex beings, and you can't just look at one part to explain everything. You know, when I almost lost my leg in that motorcycle accident, it changed everything in my life. It not only changed the way that I move, but it changed how I felt. If a person loses their hearing, other senses try to compensate. Anything that we do affects the whole. We don't need to look at just the parts. We need to look at, at everything. And so as we look at this, we look at the body, it's the foundation. We look at the heart, it signifies your emotional level. We look at the mind, it's the ability to learn throughout your life, that, and it makes life fascinating. The spirit, spirituality is the highest value of most people, and it's a guiding light in almost every culture. Whole brain health engages in all four levels. Each of us needs to take responsibility for his health. And remember that the brain is wired for pleasure and joy and love and interest as well as excitement. It's wired for creativity and learning. If it's painful, it's because you're having withdrawals from some of your toxic addictions. We want everyone to become a better self. So our brain has 100 billion brain cells. Neurons fire at 10 to 100 times per second. Each neuron is connected to 7,000 to 10,000 other neurons. And most adults have over 100 trillion connections called synapses. This vast connection, interconnection, presents a breathtaking degree of complexity. 
Plus, you have to remember that communication is affected by hormones and neuromodulators. The brain can't be put into a test tube and studied and manipulated by chemicals. The brain's delicate. The wiring isn't like an electrical wiring system. In fact, no neuron actually physically touches another. They communicate electrochemically. A signal is sent and a chemical messenger needs to remove, be removed so that another signal can be sent. That's why just a, a, a sharp jolt to the head can damage this wiring and it needs to be repaired. In fact, everything we experience changes the brain. The brain is remodeling all the time. If you slow neurogenesis, perhaps stop it or move it backwards, it means death. The brain prunes unneeded neurons so that new ones can take their place. Otherwise, you'd have an overcrowding problem. Well, this is the job of the hippocampus, and it does it really well. In 2014, research has shown that they actually could reverse Alzheimer's disease. This type of thing works. We can't say cure. We can't say treat. All we can say is that if your brain is healthy and you, if you have healthy neurogenesis, you will have a lesser degree of aging. Revolution, man. Revolution against aging and death. That's where we are. So there's four poisons to neurogenesis. Chronic inflammation, chronic stress, physical assaults to the head, deprivation. Increase neurogenesis by not slowing it down. Let's look at the, at the diet. There's some food nutrients and spices as well as plant extracts that I'm going to cover. And there are other foods that damage the brain and slow neurogenesis. We need to minimize those. We need to avoid those. So let me go over some of the things and explain them to you so that you have a better understanding. There's foods that really help the brain. Blueberries, they're packed with polyphenols that stimulate neurogenesis. They actually cross the blood-brain barrier. They've been shown to reverse cognitive decline in animals and humans and protect against Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, and other neurodegenerative diseases. Very important. Omega-3 fats from fish oil, flax, algae, dramatically increase neurogenesis. It protects the brain and increases brain size. Our brains are 60% fat. We want to consume the highest quality fats in order to rebuild our brain. Omega-3s are the best. Bad fats slow down the growth. Omega-3s work in a number of ways by increasing neuride growth, enhancing cell transmission, and increasing neurotransmitter release. They also protect against inflammation and oxidation. One expert says by using substantial omega-3 doses, you can provide the foundation for the brain to repair itself. Another case that is greater than the SSRI use is better than SSRI use for depression. Low levels of omega-3s are associated with lower IQs in ch children and higher rates of Alzheimer's disease. There's three compounds that are important in omega-3s, ALA, DHA, and EPA. Only one is available in a vegetarian diet. That's the ALA. It can convert to the other two, but that's a very inefficient process, and only 8% is converted in a healthy vegan. So fish oil and other sea sources are the best. In fact, I don't believe that there's any better investment for your brain health. Green tea has an extract, has an ingredient called EGCG, which is epigalactican. It's a polyphenol that increases neurogenesis. It helps protect with um, cancer prevention, cardiovascular health, as well as finding increased immunity. It improves working memory, which is one of the most difficult parts of the brain to increase. Green tea has much less caffeine than other teas. It produces relaxations. It can be extracted into formulations, and they're saying that the equivalent to 3 to 10 cups per day is optimal, depending on the person. Curcumin is a, another ingredient that adds to, to the neurogenesis. It's, it's the ingredient that gives the yellow color to that curry um, from turmeric. Powerful anti-inflammatory, antioxidant type of a compound. Aging people notice that they have less cognitive dysfunction and they have better performance when they're using this. It prevents beta amyloid and plaque formations, which are seen in the Alzheimer population. Because of this, it has a high potential in a strategy against 
Alzheimer's disease. They're showing that 200 to 1,200 milligrams per day is essential. And you got to kind of experiment a little bit with this to figure out what you need. These are the four superstars that make a huge difference. It's a great start for anybody, just those four. And, and, and it's so bioavailable, but so available out there in, in the public that it's practically uh, priceless. Costs are, are, are null. So let's look at a couple other things. Isoflavins containing uh, Dazin, genistein, also seem to be neuroprotective. Ginseng increases neurogenesis, protects against strokes while enhancing memory. Some people tend to feel a little bit overstimulated with this one, so you, you really kind of got to um, figure it out for yourself what you can take. Ginkgo biloba, it's been used as a memory booster for years. It also prevents amyloid plaque that's found in Alzheimer's disease. Guessertin is found in fruits and vegetables. It's anti-inflammatory, antioxidant. 500 milligrams twice per day is what I'm finding from the experts. Vitamin E in the natural form helps to build the brain with neurogenesis. Piperin, a black pepper extract, helps with the bioavailability of other poorly absorbed extracts like the curcumin. DHEA is a precursor for other hormones. It's called one of the youth hormones, and it increases neurogenesis, and it's also neuroprotective. 5-hydroxytryptophan. 5-HTP is a precursor for serotonin, and it helps enhance the building of the serotonin levels. Rhodiola is herbal adaptogen, best taken in the morning because it does cause some stimulation. Melatonin, produced by the pineal gland. It has health benefits, including sleep. Not only does it increase neurogenesis, but it also helps to regulate it. Some people take one milligram, other people take 20 to 30. We're all different, so you just have to really experiment on what you need. Mulberry extract stimulates neurogenesis. Red sage, also known as salvia, has been used in oriental medicine for stroke recovery. It's strong in neurogenesis. Lithium is a mineral that's been used for bipolar disease, but it also helps to prevent brain shrinkage. It sometimes makes people sleepy, so again, you really need to start out slow and see what you need. Goji berry from the Himalayas, it's a powerful antioxidant, it's a strong neurogenesis factor. Grapeseed extracts, beneficial for the heart and cardiovascular system, increases neurogenesis. Lotus root extract promotes neurogenesis. Apigenin, found in grapefruit, celery, parsley, stimulates neurogenesis. Liviolin from peanuts stimulates neurogenesis. Hesperidin, found in fruits and vegetables, has been found to increase greater neuron birth and survival. Keep the cells alive rather than have them die off early and you're going to have more neurons. Magnesium threonate. It's been shown to be the best form of magnesium because magnesium has a hard time passing through the blood-brain barrier, but this magnesium threonate has been shown to, to pass through it quite easily. It boosts cognitive performance and it prevents Alzheimer's decline in mice in experiments. Vitamin D helps with depression, decreases the levels of Alzheimer's disease and all forms of dementia. Ashwagandha, an Indian herb with regenerative properties, increases dendrite growth and has antidepressant effects protecting the neurons. Resveratrol stimulates the sirtuin gene, the gene of youthfulness. Make your brain young again. Cocoa and chocolate. They have flavonoids that have been long known to help with neurogenesis. Phosphatidylserine, if produced by the brain, helps build new brain cells. It decreases with age. In the U.S., but it's a prescription in the Euro European Union. 100 milligrams seems to help with memory. Cinnamon is also very strong. Use it as an extract because it can be toxic, and just you want to be able to regulate how much you're getting. Most of these can be taken daily, multiple times per week. The right dose is crucial on some, as taken too much will make a sensitive person feel speedy or anxious, and sometimes it'll have the opposite effect on people. There's no one size that fits all. Each person needs to experiment what works for them. I use applied kinesiology to determine what's good for my clients. 
Many people feel today that there's kind of an intellectual whiplash from different messages that they get from the media. You know, what can I eat? Is that good for me today? Is it bad for me today? And, you know, it's really hard to decide. You really have to take a look at the science. What can you eat to help with the brain? This is the thing to think about. Pick and choose neuro-healthy foods and avoid those that are neurotoxic. And before we go into eating, one thing that I really feel is worth mentioning is that they found that uh, caloric restriction by reducing your calories to 30 to 40% of your normal diet actually increases neurogenesis. That means that you'll feel hungry. And when you feel hungry, your brain has to wake up. It has to go to work. Eating unhealthy foods, unhealthy fats, lots of sugars, slows down the neurogenesis process. Look at our diet in America. Holy cow. So maybe what we need to do is look at having a healthy diet five days a week and fasting two days per week. Well, if we look at the current guidelines, the government restrictions say 60% carbs, 20% protein, 20% fat. When we look at the healthy diet for the brain, it's 60 to 75% fat, 20% protein, 20% carbs. In a modern diet, they've taken and reversed what we need. Healthy fats feed the head. In a typical Western diet, carbs are the mainstay. 50 to 80% of people in America have insulin resistance. This means that the body can't properly process carbs and break them down into sugars. This leads to problems with advanced glycation end products, which damage the heart, the brains, the eyes, the cardiovascular system. Alzheimer's disease has been called type 3 diabetes. Cooking with vegetable oils causes problems and produces oxidation. They're actually finding that butter, lard, coconut butters are much better to cook with. Diets rich in antioxidants like fresh fruits and vegetables really help the, the, the vegetables and fruits with the blues, the purples, the yellows, the greens, the reds are so healthy. The darker, the better. The evidence is there. A healthy brain, brain needs a healthy blood supply, but chronic inflammation eats away at the blood vessels. Eat fed, fish, grass-fed beef, eggs from pasture-raised chickens, nuts, seeds, virgin coconut oil. We get lots of fiber from vegetables like squash and berries and carrots and string bean, kale, bok choy, broccoli, cauliflower. The fiber slows down the time that it, that it takes to turn uh, carbs into sugars. The slower it is, the better the, your body will process it, and you won't have the insulin resistance as a result. Moderate alcohol consumption has been shown to reduce neurogenesis by as much as 40%. That's a moderate alcohol consumption. Can you imagine some of these people that are drinking all the time? Avoid deficiencies in zinc and vitamin A and B vitamins, thiamine, folic acid. When you're low in these vitamins, you're going to have slower neurogenesis. Avoid soft foods. It reduces neurogenesis. Eating liquid food reduces survival of new brain cells. Solid food has a harder texture and it needs to be chewed. Chewing increases neurogenesis. Older adults who have lost their teeth have impaired chewing ability and therefore have an impaired neurogenesis. These are some important things to think about as you put together your, your daily diet, as you put together what you're going to do tomorrow, as you put together your plan for a healthy future and a long life. DW, I'm going to hand it over to you. I want you to talk about some of the ingredients being in the products that we have with our sizzle lineup. Thank you, everyone. Doc Fizz, you're awesome. I have nothing I know. I mean, I'm just sitting here going, my Lord have mercy. We have a lot of notes to take. I'm so glad we got this recorded because a lot of you are going to want to go back and record this. But you're talking about building cells and, and the mitochondria of the cells. It is kind of, you know, a lot of people kind of wonder what that is. But when you talk about building a cell, the mitochondria is kind of like the the generator inside the cell that that can get corroded with uh, antioxidants and and um, you know and I mean you know with free radicals and that's why we have antioxidants. Well, one of the best things to go rebuild the cells we have we have about two or three of them, but 
One of the best things is our hydrogen water. You talk about brain health and you talk about having health in your body and your system. You're, you're talking about putting yourself in a position where you need to just absolutely give yourself oxygen. And, uh, and maybe when we have more time, we can go into even some, some things that you do that you can breathe. And I'll, I'll share one of them with you right, right quick with it. You, you, you breathe in your air and you feel the top of your lungs totally full. Then you breathe in some more, fill it full. Then breathe in some more and it's starting to hurt a little bit. And then let it out your mouth real slow until you can count to about 20. First time you do it, it might be eight or nine or ten times. And, and uh, then, you, then you breathe in through your nose again and fill up the bottom of your lungs and just saturate it with, with oxygen as well. Um, you know, and, then, and then you let it out your mouth again and try to get to 15 or 20 count. It, it might take you a week or two, so don't worry about that. Do that a, a few times at night before you go to sleep. It relaxes the brain, relaxes the body, oxygenates the body, lowers, helps lower sugar levels. Well, that's what we're doing when it comes to our brain vitality product. I want to, I'm not going to do the research for you. I want you to grab that bottle and see what's in it. It will absolutely light your brain on fire and just wake it up. And, you know, and some of the other things that, that make a big difference there is, um, you know, and Doc's talking about is our Encompass 360, another incredible brain food. food. And uh, another cell build, builder that's going to rebuild the cells and restructure the organs in the body, uh, put them in a position where they can be restructured or, or add more cells as the telomeres. And that's with our TSX product. So that's going to make a big difference in your life as well. Taking uh, regular doses of eternity and, and taking that is something that's going to help along with the brain and kind of wake up the body and, and wake, wake the brain up just a little bit. Getting rid of all sugars in your life, getting rid of the starches, you know, which is your, your noodles and rices and, and potatoes. And potatoes is a biggie for me because I love all. I just haven't had a bad potato. Just, I just haven't. I love them all. I don't care if they're fried, sliced, diced, chipped. It doesn't matter. I'm all in. So but getting those things out of your life, making them a rarity, something you do, you know, maybe one meal a month or something, you know, getting those things out that gives your, your body, um, you know, getting rid of those starches, getting rid of the carbohydrates that you're, that you're uh, over, overtaking. Not, there's good carbs and bad, so you'll need to do a little research on that. Another thing that's going to serve you very well is our Omega Plus. It has all the fish oils that you could possibly want at highest potency and, and, and uh, put there with, with just such a such a powerful potency as well. And so it, you want optimal health. And we're just talking about feeding the brain. But then you, you move into that product. Um, the, it, not only does it have all, they call it a you know, super, super omega plus, the plus part of it is um, it has coenzyme Q10, which is like, is, which is like putting nutrition on, on and in the heart, strengthening the heart muscle so it can push the, push the blood and the oxygen that you put into your blood to your extremities, like your, you know, your eye vessels and your feet and your toes and, and fingers and, and get circulation going again. And so, which means you're going to start feeling like moving, you're going to feel like moving again. Getting a 10 minute walk a day using some of those breathing techniques while you're walking is ginormous. And I learned those techniques when I moved to Denver and the altitude was, was so different and, and needed to know how to, how to go exercise and do stuff on that, in that, uh, in, in that type of um, altitude. So um, then did some research myself on, on how to, when I was getting my leg healed up, how to, uh, uh, get the sugar levels down, which is ginormous for healing. And so and those breathing techniques came in. Uh, then you have a couple things that's going to that's gonna kind of wake up the brain and get you doing some things. I, I love what, what Doc's talking about here. You know, we're, we're putting you in a position to where you can feed your feed your body some calcium and get them uh, the uh, um, um, vitamin D supplement that we have. And balanced D is what we refer to it as, you know, getting the D in your body. Having that five to ten minute nice solid walk a day, maybe even twice a day, and getting your body moving, getting it going, waking up the brain, doing, you know, we always talk about all these puzzles and all that. There's not an exact formula you can say, boom, go do this, and you got the best brain in the world. Everyone's brain's different. Everyone's body's different, and but I do know this: a lot of brains are dehydrated, and you want to hydrate your brain. Well, you can do that with our with uh, our hydrogen um, diatomic hydrogen system that we have that that will give you also a, a three to four stage filtering system that'll give you some of the best water on the planet. 
and and I was doing some study on water today and, and was looking at some things, and I'm going, my goodness, people are selling stuff out there. They'll do this, that, and the other, and yada, 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 and we have one of the best units on the planet. So there's a lot of stuff now when he's talking about having all those nutrients in your body, and he's talking about all those different colors of vegetables and fruits that you can have. Our Ultramax, um, uh, our Spectre, excuse me, Spectramax is going to be a huge benefit to you. That is something that is a game changer, and you can take that in small doses several times a day, so you splash your body with multiple doses of nutrition. If you're going through asthma attacks or breathing challenges, you can take bigger doses, you know, and uh, along with our Ficoidin is another game changer, and we mentioned eternity here a few minutes ago. The inflammation that goes around, you know, aspects that affect the brain, and uh, because, you know, the brain will is, is the thing that will indicate to you, ah, there's pain, boom, and uh, so you get rid of the pain. The brain's working for the positive, not sending uh, uh, buckets of cortisol to a, a problem that's inf inflamed and hurt. So we can get your inflammation down, get your oxygen levels up, get your nutrition in there, get the army of uh, uh, Encompass 360. It's like, it's like what Encompass 360 does, it, it would be, it'd be equivalent to you, you know, sending some nutrition to your body and having one army guy take this thing and send it there. Or you could take the Encompass 360, and it's like having 10,000 army guys deliver nutrition to your body. It lays that foundation so you can absorb everything else that, uh, that we're going to throw at you. So this is a big topic. I mean, you know, we, we uh, run out of time about the time Doc Viz got done talking. And so we've got to restructure things just a little bit so I can have a little more time with the products. But with that said, guys, you're in the right place at the right time. We absolutely, absolutely, totally, completely love Love what we uh, what we have our hands on here when it comes to the Mauer mission, getting toxins out of your body, you know, uh, getting the alcohol out of your system. Uh, Tom talks about how many cells alcohol destroys. I mean, it just destroys cells like crazy, and so you can go nuts on that and put yourself in a very very bad spot. If you're if you're in a situation where you have to take medications, um, synthetic narcotics and drugs for uh, uh, emergency purposes. You know, the body shield is going to be one of your best friends as you get off those things, getting the heavy metals out of your body. So we love everyone. We want to thank you to being part of the doctor's clinic call tonight. And uh, if my buddy Dan Kennison is still with me, I'd like him to say hi to everybody. Dan, is this, is this a wealth of information tonight or what? You know, it's absolutely incredible. We hear from what you said, what Doc said. And, you know, Janice uh, Gaines earlier told me, you know, I've got my feet right now in – and for Coiden, Spectrum Action, and uh, the Eternity, a little bit, and, and it just comes right to my feet and makes my, I have no feet pain. You know, that I'm drinking Sensha Tea. I took my brain vitality out, my Super Omega, and I'm, <clears throat> you know, I even put some peanut butter on a salary stick. And, you know, the more he talked, the more I just kept taking things out, and I got so doggone excited about, I want to I want to be smart just like you, DW, and I want to be just smart just like Tom, and and, and, and just like Dr. Kurt Fisnick, so back to you. I feel smart. And I tell you what, I'm, I got my feet right now in a foot bath right now, triangle of life. And I tell you what, doing that, ever since Janice told me that, I don't have any more foot pain. Back to you. It's amazing how it can draw some of the toxins and some of the inflammation out of your out of your body. I mean, we've had people that have that have gone through neuropathy, the um, um, pain that comes from high sugar levels, uh, type one, type two diabetes, where the nerves in the feet are damaged, and they're soaking them in hydrogen immediately, just taking taking uh, four ounces of hydrogen at a time and pour it on the feet and and soaking them in that and getting getting uh, quite a bit of relief. So that's another thing. We're in the right place, guys. We absolutely love everybody, and I'm glad this call went a little longer. We can handle overtime when it comes to football and basketball and our sports, and once in a while when it comes to our nutrition, a little overtime isn't so bad. All right, that's it for the doctor's clinic where the world is your waiting room. Bring these calls to them. Get the information to individuals. You, you don't have to be the guy, but if you know the guy, then you can get things out. And we all right here, we know the guy, and his name is Tom Maurer. And he's on a mission to get you healthy, have an optimal health in your life. God bless everybody. Thanks for being part of the call.